The story is about a little girl who travels from Los Angeles to Rhode Island to uh, stay with her dad and his new girlfriend in a mansion that they've been restoring. Uh, she's sort of lost uh, in between her parents who are both sort of selfish and so self-motivated and sort of has had to rely on herself uh, through her upbringing. And uh, as the story progresses and uh, the monsters start to uh, appear, she's sort of forced to gravitate towards Alex's new girlfriend who also is struggling to find herself and how she's, how she's grown up and how the, the, the challenges that she's had. And so it's actually a, a really nice uh, bonding story between uh, Kim and Sally um, juxtaposed with this great scary monster movie. Guillermo and I have been calling it a dark fantasy for, from the very beginning. I know a lot of people sort of are, are thinking of it as a horror, and I guess it is in, in the classic sense of the way the horror movies that came out in the 70s, where you actually had really strong characterization uh, and then really scary moments. And, um, but you can see a lot of parallels between between Don't Be Afraid of the Dark and Pan's Labyrinth. It's a, it's a project that Guillermo's been very passionate about since he saw it uh, when he, in his youth. And he's been working on this project for 15 years to bring it to light. What really gravitated me to the project was the strong dynamic between the three characters of Kim, Sally, and Alex and how they are working on real, relatable situations and problems that are underlined by this horrible, scary story of these monsters in the, you know, coming out of the ash pit. And so you can see this growth of these characters through the story, especially with Sally and, and uh, Kim. And uh, I think that relationship, more than any other in the movie, is what really, really connected me to it. He's always had a public email address out there uh, that he's, you know, that anyone can email him on. And, and I remember very early sending him a couple of images from my short, and he responded very positively to it. And then when the short was finished, uh, a mutual friend of ours, Nick Nunzietta, sent it to him. Guillermo watched it, and and uh, he sent me back a uh, a quick little email response. Uh, but then, minutes later after reading the email, Nick phoned and said, well, he wants you to phone him. And he told me that he had a project that he thought I would be perfect for and if I'd be interested in reading it. So, of course, yes. <laughs> three, three second delay in answering that question. It was a very emphatic yes, and he sent the, the project along, uh, the script along. It was probably two and a half years ago now that uh, I first became aware of it and read the script. Um, it's gone through different revisions, um, but all along the, the main thrust of the story is there of these three characters and then the, you know, this really great, scary monster movie. We were very fortunate with the actors that we uh, we have involved. I've, I've loved working with, with all of them. and, and what you always hope going into a project is that the people you bring together work as a work as a whole and they obviously do guy is completely professional and prepared every day and is just an amazing actor katie's so katie is great she's she brings such an emotional level to her character lots of subtlety and, and strength and vulnerability and Bailey just nails it every time. She's nine years old, but sometimes you know everyone jokes that she's she's almost like an adult. She comes in eager and ready, and uh, and and gives it her all. And the three of them working together, you believe, are a family. Well, we wanted to uh, be respectful of the original creature design from the 1973 movie. 
And so there was three of us working, myself, Chet Zar, and Keith Thompson, um, working out of Guillermo's home in uh, California. And we just started spitballing ideas around for about a week and a half. It, it took about a week and a half to come up with the final design of the creature. We knew we wanted them to be small. We knew that we wanted to have some inkling or some, some like I said, nod to the, to, the, uh, to the original version and just make them as scary as possible, these ancient old wrinkly little things. And so it was just uh, um, back and forth with ideas here and there until we came up with something that we're all very, very happy with. And we hope will scare a whole new generation of kids. It's been incredible. It's, it's, it's every emotion you could imagine wrapped, in, wrapped into one day of shooting, day after day after day. It's, uh, it's learning a lot, but it's also having that confidence moving forward to, to get the shots and to, uh, to get what you need. And, and just knowing that and being aware of what I bring to it, but also knowing what everyone else brings to it. And so listening is as big is as big a, a learning tool as as, uh, as as having the vision and the uh, and the strength to make those decisions that you have to make, you know, 